You know that horrible feeling when you know there are things you want to do, you just can't bring yourself to start? This method can help stop that procrastination. Good morning. Today I'll be showing the most effective way I found to organize my planner or diary or calendar or whatever you want to call it. I love the way it keeps me focused and calm during stressful times whether for you that's at school, university or work and also the way it keeps me motivated and productive when I don't have anything urgent like over the holidays or in isolation because of a global pandemic. I developed this during high school when I was definitely overcommitted to sports and extracurricular activities and always trying to find time to study. Instead of cutting down on the things that I really enjoyed, I just spent lots of time researching and experimenting with the best ways to organize myself. During my final year of school, I managed a high 90s ATAR while staying quite balanced and having an activity basically every day. I was actually more balanced and less stressed in the last half of the year, even though it's notoriously harder because I had really honed this method and it made sure I always knew what I had to do and when I was going to do it. It works for both physical planners and online systems. Let's start with the physical diary. Your planner might be set out in a range of ways, maybe like this or like this, or maybe you have lots of space with each day on a separate page. It really doesn't matter. All you need to do is take whatever space you have and split it into two sections. In the first section, record events and due dates. Basically, this section is where you record things that you're accountable to others for. I like to record events at the top of this section and due dates down the bottom, but it doesn't matter if they're jumbled up. Also, you might not get all your events in chronological order, as is the nature of a physical diary, so don't worry about that either. I'm very minimalist, but if you like to use colors for events or subjects, do whatever makes you happy because I know that this motivates some people. When it comes to due dates for large assignments, take some time to split the assignment up into smaller parts and set due dates for each of those parts. For example, maybe you have a big art essay due in two weeks. It requires you do two academic readings and have a bibliography. Let's break it down. First, you need to do the two readings and make notes on them. Second, collate the notes into a rough essay outline. Then you want to create a first draft and swap it for peer marking with a friend who's great at art history. Finally, you want to get that essay back, update it and finalize the bibliography to hand it in. With these four steps, I like to set due dates working backwards. For example, four is when it's due. So you want to have at least three days to update and finalize. And so you'll need four days to get from the outline to the first draft. And then you want to give yourself five days to do the readings and make the notes. You can also break down exam preparation in the same way. For example, an English exam that requires you to write an essay on an unseen question about the crucible. Let's break it down. First, you want to collate a rough draft of your notes. Then you want to type up a practice essay and send it to your teacher for feedback. Then you hope to get that feedback and update the essay and the notes from the changes. And once you've got those updates, you want to do a practice exam, maybe open book and open time. So that means with your notes by your side and no time constraints. Finally, as your last bit of preparation, you want to do an exam conditions practice. Now you have those five steps to be well prepared for that assessment. You can use the same method and work backwards putting in those sub due dates. The second section. This is where you put tasks and study that you want to get done that day. If the first section is for things you're accountable to others for, this section is for things you're accountable to yourself for. This is how you should use it. For personal tasks you need or want to get done, 
for example, a run, calling your grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> some personal logistical thing, maybe like booking an event or paying a bill. Or that project you've been putting off for a while, like selling your secondhand items online. Then use it for study or work tasks. Each time you record when something is due, write down when you will do it. For example, we can see exercise 24 is due on Thursday. So when you write that in, you write down that you plan to do it on Tuesday afternoon. During the day, you can see what you need to do to stay on track and cross out the items as you go. This is the important part. At the end of the day, you need to look back on what wasn't done, what hasn't been crossed off and reallocate when you're going to do that. For example, you didn't get exercise 24 done on Tuesday, so you move it to Wednesday. Or maybe you didn't get your run done on Monday, so you plan to do an extra long route on Tuesday. The great part about this system is it gives you warning when you won't be able to keep up. Pushing yourself a little out of your comfort zone with busyness can be quite effective in increasing productivity. There is truth in the idiom, if you want something done, give it to a busy person. But too much work is a massive killer of motivation. Maybe you don't have time for debating or intensive sport, or maybe your personal project needs to wait, or you need to reassess which subjects you're taking and how long they're taking you. In this way, you can make adjustments to stay realistic and motivated. Now, if you like working with technology like me, this is the same system but using software. I would argue it works better this way. Basically, it's splitting the two sections into two separate apps. For the first section, with events and due dates, use a calendar app. A lot of people use Apple Calendar by default, but I personally think Google Calendar has a much better user experience and the user interface is lovely. Obviously, events are much easier to put in this way and you'll be reminded of them before they happen. When recording a due date, just make an all-day appointment so it moves to the top. For the second section with the daily tasks, you can use any listing app you like. For example, Notes or Trello or OneNote like me. This section is a little different from the physical planner method. I like to start with a large list of all the tasks I need to do. Here we have work-related tasks, and you can see that this is how I split up the bigger assignments in this format, and personal tasks. And then I create a daily agenda by planning which things from the large list I will do. Then I tick them off when they're done. It's less satisfying than crossing them off, but hey, it works. Or if they don't get done, they just stay on the list for tomorrow. This online system may require a little more motivation because you can't see exactly when in the week you're going to do your tasks, but you can play around with maybe splitting up your agendas by day. In the same way, it will become very clear when you aren't staying on track and need to adjust to keep on top of things and stay motivated. I have a summary of this information in the description and let me know if you have any questions or comments. Hope this helped.